we, we live in such a guitar-centric society in a lot of ways, and we've learned to appreciate certain things about the guitar as like the collective unconscious, you know, that I think ultimately are, it's like we, we live in like a codependent relationship with, with our collective unconsciousness expecting these, these kind of silly things to be done on guitar that really are terrible if you actually stop and listen to them. You know, like certain, certain things that are really exciting when you're 14, which is fantastic for that. But, you know, you'll always want to go for that kind of thing. And this is just the opposite of that. And it, it comes down to that, a point I'd like to make about, you know, um, there's really two kinds of chops, right? You think of chops as like covert chops and overt chops, you know? And overt chops are kind of essentially what we value as a society for some reason more than anything else. And, you know, there it is. You know, you have it. Al, who wants to, I, if some people, Al Hurt, want to hear Al Hurt play Flight of the Bumblebee, or, or these guys play super fast shredding guitar, you know, and, um, and I mean, it's a thing, you know what I mean? But really, to me, the, the thing that really gets the right brain going and really can communicate to you on a deeper level is the covert chops, you know, having a really good time, understanding how, you know, being soulful and, and playing the melody and, and really listening to the drummer's time and his groove or her groove, how that works, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, Derek w was like a big wig in the um, ultra overt chops thing. You did a drum corps and marching band. And exactly how much of that is useful in a musical situation? About 2%. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, covert jobs, right?